Almost every day of the week I get asked the question of whether a client should rent their suite out furnished or on an unfurnished basis. And this is such a common phenomenon that I've decided that it would be a good idea to make a uh, blog of this. <laughs> you know? um, hopefully the following is going to assist you if you're making this, trying to make this decision now, if you just bought some real estate in Vancouver. We have a very saturated market for furnished and uh, I'm going to give you quite a few thoughts now on the costs and so forth that are uh, associated with that. We're not adding any more furnished suites to our portfolio, incidentally. So the reason for this is, <clears throat> first of all, you need a, an average capital investment of approximately $15,000 to outfit your suite. That's for a one bedroom. No, your old basement furniture will not do. It has to be a high-end, high-profile uh, kind of suite that you're competing with, with hotels and so forth. You're going to have to factor in the annual replacement of linens regular carpet cleaning costs and painting touch-ups because there will be a lot more wear and tear on the suite. There's a lot of competition as I pointed out and you can expect at least 30 to 40 percent vacancy. You're going to have to deal with other owners in the in the complex that you purchased in. A lot of these owners will be living in the suite and they don't like the fact that their property may be used as, as a hotel by other uh, owners. So that's a concern. You then have to face very high moving fees and possibly rental restrictions. Most buildings now will charge the moving fee whether the client moves in with a suitcase or with a whole moving truck of furniture. They don't differentiate between it. So that's a much larger added cost. The average stay is probably 30 something days so you're going to have 10 or 12 moving fees a year, maybe 75 to 150 dollars per move in and sometimes even more than that. Many buildings also now have the minimum tenancy period of at least three months, sometimes six months, sometimes even a year, which makes it extremely difficult for a furnished rental. You will have to provide a full tenancy package and uh, utility package rather, which does include telephone, cable, internet, heat and light, and that all has to be paid for by you, the owner, whether there's a tenant in place or not. As I say, you're probably going to have a 30-40% vacancy, so that time you're still paying for these utilities even though the suite is vacant. There's going to be extra cleaning costs. Every time a guest moves out, you're going to have to have the suites cleaned. Pretty well impossible to get bondable cleaners under $40 an hour. An average one bedroom is going to cost about $60 to $80 to clean on a good day. Could be even worse if there's been a dirty tenant. Then there's carpet cleaning, probably three times a year. $150 a time. Um, many of the guests will require weekly cleans and sometimes they expect that to be factored into the price. Sometimes we can add that price onto the, uh, the new guest. But of course, if you yourself know, if you go into a hotel, <coughs> excuse me, you don't expect to pay for cleaning as you leave, so uh, they all do assume that cleanings are included in their monthly rents. The big scary part of the whole thing is the screening process. As you know, if you go into a hotel, basically all you have to do is put down your credit card and just move in. And they sometimes put $500 hold on it, which is what we do in our office. And then you just move in. No application, no background check, etc., um, etc. Et so we don't have a credit check or have anything like that. So consequently, all the problems that we've ever experienced in our properties have always been in furnished suites. Some of these suites are between five and ten thousand dollars. Who can afford this? Okay, there's always the the, um, the movie star, but actually they're few and far between. And most often it's crime types that are taking uh, high-profile suites on that want to live in them and uh, want to present a good front to the world. We've gone from everything from men in rubber suits, people shooting porn movies, um, phony credit cards, check fraud scams. Um, you go on. Go on. Every time we've had to evict somebody, a lot of times we've had to get them. Last time we had a meth lab, I had to get the Vancouver Police SWAT team in to get them out. Um, a lot of unsavory activities. I'm not saying this is, this is the norm, but uh, these are definitely possibilities that you have to be concerned about. Um, as I said, and to reiterate, most of our problem tenants have been in furnished situations, basically because we don't have a way of background checks. And a lot of times we've had that they've paid us with fraudulent credit cards. So then you're not getting paid either. Plus they've caused, and they tend to cause damage these people. 
we've had 60 inch TV screens uh, smashed with crystal bottles and so forth, they don't care. So uh, there's also the credit card fees, we, we would have to charge that back, most of them pay by credit cards, hopefully not when they're not phony, but the fee is 3% to charge back. So a commission is 20%, there's a tremendous amount of work done, most people won't even uh, change a light bulb if they're moving, they expect us to do everything for them. We have to meet them from the airport at all days, hours of the day and night. Um, and uh, we have to deal with so many things uh, which we wouldn't normally deal with. It's very, very labor intensive business. Now, as opposed to the furnished scenario that I've just described to you, on the unfurnished side of things, you can expect a one year lease with 100% occupancy. And currently, the rental market is extremely good. Probably the average has moved up from $2 to about $2.20 a square foot, possibly even $2.50 in the better quality buildings. We do full credit and employment checks. We verify income, verify employment. We actually call the Human Resources Department. We know who we're dealing with. We take um, photo ID. We want to make sure that they're actually who they're purporting to be. Um, their commission is only 8% in this instance. There's definitely less wear and tear on the street suite and the tenants are bound by the Residential Tenancy Act and they are obliged to um, pay us a damage deposit and leave the property in, in a reasonable condition when they leave. Of course there's no utility costs, those are all passed on to the uh, tenant and generally we ask the tenant to pay the moving fee. The tenant also has to pay for the cleaning, we have to provide it for them in a clean manner and uh, they have to leave it in the same condition. We did the math on pretty well all of our furnished suites. We did spreadsheets and I worked out projected incomes if the same units had been uh, rented out on an unfurnished basis. And even though the monthly rent is, is less, over a 12 month period, just about in every case, they were far, far ahead by being unfurnished as opposed to being furnished. So I would just say, do the math and uh, you realize that it's much less trouble and much less worry to rent unfurnished and your bottom line is probably be a lot better too and we'd be very happy to help you uh, manage your suite for you.